I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Excuse me, the Altar Guild graciously cleaned my alp today, and they took all my tissues. So, it's starting to be allergy season, I can tell. Good morning again. So here we have another parable that's super confusing. Are we supposed to deceive people? Are we supposed to cheat and lie and be sneaky about things? Because that's kind of what it sounds like. And so I spent quite a bit of time sitting with this this week and reading a lot of commentaries, most of which were like, yeah, we don't have anything. It's super confusing. And sometimes I wonder if these stories, like, they were part of bigger stories back in the day, and folks knew what they were actually saying in the subtext, and it's just been lost to history. And so we're kind of making things up as we go. But isn't that the world anyway? Um, so one of the things that I'd really be considering is um, this idea of doing the best that we can and how it's very easy from the outside to look at others and judge them by their acts or their words, but not really knowing what's in their hearts. And I think that's pretty common. And it's pretty easy to say, well, this manager was cheating, lying, stealing, whatever it was he was doing, therefore he's a very bad person, right? Like, not lovable, he's no good. And then to look at someone else who's doing like something really great and good and is out in the world, you know, very, very um, forward with their love and their care and think that person is great, they're perfect, how could I ever be like that? And we heard this morning in the testimonial about how being a faithful person is hard. Like we have scripture as a guide, right? And there isn't a specific rule book for every single circumstance that we encounter in life. So we do the best that we can. And the good news is God created us not to be perfect, but out of love. And so basically, anything we do, we're still good with that love. We still have that goodness and that love in us, and we want to keep trying our best. I heard an expression last night that I had never heard before, and I don't know that I'm going to get it just right if you've heard it, but, the, but what the person said was basically, it's easier to slow a galloping horse than motivate a dead one, <laughs> which I found quite colorful and really stuck with me, and I've been thinking about what is the momentum of this story, right? So we hear about this manager who wasn't doing great stuff, it sounds like. It sounds like his boss was figuring out he was maybe, I don't know, doing stuff on the side he shouldn't have been doing. And so to cover his tracks a little bit, he offered to do some debt forgiveness for the people who owed him. We've been hearing a lot about debt forgiveness these days with student loan forgiveness all of that. And one of the things that we're learning is when folks are crushed by debt, they are not able to really live fully into the life that we all deserve of care and ease and knowing that we don't have to worry every single moment. That's part of being a faithful person. Like we don't know what's happening in the next moment, but we do know how the story's going to end and we're going to be okay. But when we are crushed by chances like debt, it can be very challenging for us. And so whether this manager was doing it for his own good or the good, except that do I need to maybe go up to the left? I'm not sure why this keeps cutting out. Give me the high sign if you need me to move. Um, but what we do know is the momentum of this, the small step of this, was that people were going to have a better life. And I think part of why he got praised. Step in the right direction. 
it was some momentum. Maybe that horse had been galloping the wrong way and needed to be pulled back, but at least there was some momentum toward goodness with that. Versus this man could have just given up and walked away. That would have been a dead horse that was pretty hard to revive. And I've been thinking about what are some other examples of this easy step. And one might be, so perhaps in college, and one of them, I'm not going to tell you which one, is a procrastinator and really struggles to start anything. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's the chapter, the book, the paper, the cleaning, the room, which thank goodness I don't have to worry about anymore. Um, all of those things. We talk a lot about what's just the next That's read a page. Maybe that's write a paragraph. Maybe that's pick up just a couple of things on the floor. Ten, we used to do 10 second tidy when my kids were little, and we would pick up in 10 seconds. And it was just in the right direction. I'm going through that right now with all the boxes in my house having just moved and thinking like, oh my gosh, this is never going to end, all of these boxes of things. And I think, okay, I'll unpack one box. It's one step. It's not being dead. It's not being overwhelmed, but just trying to do the next right thing. And recognizing that there is so much love and care and abundance in this world offered to us by God. I mean, Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice, right? Like, he gave everything, even his life, for us, which means we don't have to do that. We don't have to sacrifice everything that we are and everything that we have. We do need to think about what is the next right step. Where is there maybe a little less momentum than we need to have? And how can we do, how can we create some energy and some movement? And we're talking about that a lot with our stewardship campaign, this idea of living generously, having abundance, recognizing that we need to offer what we have, our time, our talents, our treasures, to build up what's here move it out into the world in really beautiful and life-giving and loving ways. So I may have gone on a total tangent that has nothing to do with this parable, but hopefully it's given you something to think about in your own life. What's the next right step that you can take? Even if from the outside it doesn't look perfect, because again, being a person of faith is not always easy, and that's one of the reasons we show up to be together, to offer encouragement to one another, to have the energy and momentum to help us move through the world, and to remember that no matter what we do, we are loved. It's okay to make the mistake, and it's okay to change direction, to recognize I'm not on the path that is the most loving path, and so I'm going to just take another step and side turn. And it's exciting to think, what are the next steps here for us as St. Luke's? Where are we going? Because again, we don't know exactly how the story is going to unfold, but we do know how it ends. And that is being enveloped with God and with one another. And so I encourage you to think about where can you offer and be loved knowing how loved you